Welcome to Think Out for Your Imagination. This podcast is about the imagination of me, Jennifer Purcell, and other neurodivergents and neurotypicals, and how our imagination is still vivid because we are neurodivergent, and about my imagination I used to have when I was little, and bringing it to life and sharing it with you. I hope that you enjoy this first episode and that you will be inspired to email me if you want to be interviewed about your imagination that you had when you were little. I will put my email in the podcast description for you. Chapter 6, Traveling for Charlie's File. I always wanted to be able to take my childhood house with me on my family vacations. So I would pretend that I could do this because I wanted to be able to sleep in my bed. I would imagine that you could fold it up into a pocket size shape so that it was easy to take it with you wherever you pleased. I was also doing that at my friend's house so that they could join me and my family on my trips. I always miss my friends when we went on our trips. The fact that I could bring my house and friend's house with me on trips made it fun because then we could play in any country we were visiting. Vacation was always an escape for me and my family from the busy lives that we had back home. We liked to go at least to one new country each year. We also rented a car and explored the places that weren't that touristy. We did go to some of the touristy places ones but not all of them because you wanted to see some of the unusual places in that country that were not common for tourists to visit. We also used Rick Steve recommendations when traveling in Europe because he had been to many countries there. He had many great suggestions on where to go, what to do, and what attractions to see. And when we traveled we made friends but not being friendly sorry by not being friendly, but by trying to learn some of the basics of the local language of that country. We got lost in some of the places when we were trying to drive to, but eventually found our way by calling them. We also tried some of the local cuisines. We always would have a picnic meal from a local market that we would enjoy in our hotel room or outside a lovely monument such as Eiffel Tower. We would also sometimes go to a third world country and do some service work there. We would connect with a local organization and do some microfinance loans for that community. Then we would build something that would help that community such as a greenhouse or concrete stove. I know this doesn't sound like a typical family vacation, but it was a typical one for my family. We enjoyed them immensely because we felt good about what we were doing for those needed people. Once one travels for Charlie style, they will never want to travel any other way since it's the best way. It gives you the most flexibility. It also allows you to see touristy spots and non-touristy ones as well. So it's perfectly balanced because you get to decide how you want to travel. Chapter 7, My Wish. Traveling with my house, family, and friends in my pocket. I have a mantra that I can travel with my house, like I said before, and family, my pocket, so that they are with me wherever I go. I like doing this because then I am never lonely and I will never miss them. I did this when I was on my international trips. We were usually traveling for three weeks, so I missed my extended family. But if I folded them up in my house, then I could take them with me. And that is exactly what I did. I love doing this because then they could join me in the adventures that we had on our trips. They could keep me safe from the dark side, and they could also help me fight them. I also did this with my friend's house because I wanted them to join me as well. I did miss them too. This way I could have my family and friends with me wherever I went, and I didn't have to miss them. I enjoyed doing this when we traveled because I was able to share my adventures with my families and friends. I also was able to keep them safe from the dark side. I wasn't able to do this in college because I didn't need to, but I'll address the reason for that in a later chapter. 
traveling in cube style. Traveling in cube style means that you can fold up whatever three-dimensional objects into pocket size so you can take them with you wherever you go. I love being able to do this because it makes it easier to pack for your trips. You can take any of your clothes with you. You can take your pets with you. You can also take your bedroom with you because you can bring your whole house with you. This is awesome because it means you can bring your kitchen with you. You can live in your house during your vacations. This is convenient and affordable because then you don't have to pay for hotels. You only have to pay for food, seeing touristy places, cars, and other activities you may want to do. You can also bring your backyard with you if you desire, desire to. Excuse me. This would be beneficial if the place you were traveling to was a desert or didn't have a swimming pool. My ha house has a backyard with a swimming pool, jacuzzi, orchard of citrus fruit, avocados, and a fire pit. So I am bringing my backyard with me on my vacations. It will allow me to entertain my family and friends. I may also be able to make some friends in the country I'm visiting with. And who wouldn't want to have friends in other countries that they visit in the future? No one. Next chapter, my new world. My 401 stuffed animals keeping their mama safe. So my world has changed now because I can travel in cube style and have 401 stuffed animals that keep their mama and cube safe. Each animal is a warrior and superhero because they have their own set of unique powers. For instance, some are psychic, telekinetic, immortal, and cryokinetic. Also, some of them can teleport, time travel, become invisible, modify the weather, and make illusions. Others have X-ray vision, fairy or dragon wings. And finally, some have superhuman sense like strength, sight, smell, and breath. These powers are helpful because they come in handy when they are on the battlefield. My warriors choose to fight to keep me safe when I am away on my trips and at home. I fight with them both when I'm at home and away. I can do all of the superpowers I listed in the previous paragraph. We have never lost a battle when we have fought against the middle or dark side. We usually fight more with the dark than the middle because the dark dislikes us more than the middle does. Most of the members of the middle used to be light or dark at one point in time, so they know what it's like to be on either side. The middle side sometimes will split itself according to who used to be a part of light and dark. Then they will fight alongside those sides. This has helped the light win many battles, but this has never made the dark win, and no one knows why except the Chosen One, M. Cute. She knows that the Chosen One of the dark side has a weak spot. He has a weak spot for her because once upon a time they used to be on the same side, and he chose to keep his memories when he changed sides. So they both remember what relationship they used to have and sometimes wish it was still true. But they both know that sadly it will never happen again as long as both sides exist. That is what created the dark and light side. The middle side is the one who is in between the two and wants to keep it that way. So there, the three sides were born and three chosen ones were voted for by the members of each side. Each side has its army, language, and powers. But some share similar powers. Each chosen one knows a little bit of the other one's language. M cubed knows all the languages of the middle and the dark side. But the middle and dark side do not know this is true, so they so don't tell them. Shh, it's a secret. Also, each side has its own home where they live. They never enter each other's home when they are fighting. 
there's a blank spot that they fight in where no one lives. Basically, it doesn't. My 401 stuffed animal warriors saving their mama from the enemy. There have been countless times that M-Cube's army of stuffed animal warriors have come to her rescue. One time that I vividly remember is when the dark and light sides were fighting continuously for about 200 years. This was a long and difficult war. It was fought in the blank spot because we didn't want to damage either of our world, and we wanted to keep our family safe. This war was the longest one in history for both sides. It was a monumental fight because it involved the longest of both sides living in the blank spot, as if they were, as if it was their home. It was unheard of because usually battles only lasted a few years, and the sides could go home at times to see their families. But with this one, they didn't do that because they wanted to get it over with as soon as possible. They wanted to do this because it was a long and difficult war, and they wanted to see their families and friends ASAP. They also desired to go back to their normal lives ASAP because living in the blank spot was not an ideal place to live permanently. The warriors were, will always save their chosen one, M cubed, because it's their duty and desire to. They also want to save her because if they do, she will help them win every war that they fight. The warriors will always choose M cubed to be their chosen one because they know that she is the best choice. She's the best one because she has the most superpowers and knows the most languages and memories out of all of them. She has also been the chosen one for all the sides at one point in time of her past lives, which is rare. It is rare because usually the chosen one stays with one side only and doesn't cross over to the other sides. But it is true for M cubed because she is unique and one of a kind. M cubed's warriors will always protect her because it is their duty. It is their duty since she saved them countless times. I've been grateful for each time they have saved me, and I always will be. This is also true for them. We each know what it's like to feel the need to be saved because we have felt the need for it countless times, even though we rather not admit it. This is true because we don't want to admit that we need help. We used to think needing help was a sign of weakness, but soon realized that it was a sign of strength. It takes courage and vulnerability for one to ask for help. We will become stronger by admitting that we need help and accepting it, especially when we don't think we need it because those are the times that we need it the most. I hope that this week's episode of Think Out for your imagination brought new ideas to your mind and reminded you of when you were little and would have imagine and pretend and play with your friends or yourself and create games in your mind and you know just be just be a kid and have fun and you know what it's like to dream it and do that and be able to um, be a little kid again and you know believe in things like fairy tales and mermaids and um, wonderful creatures. I will talk to you next Thursday.